Ice is a magic thing. And it is magic because one day it's there, one day it's not there. Then it comes back and it's different. It's like something uh, organic, it's alive. One of the really fantastic things I've done is, you know, climbing tubes. Like, it's not a solid cascade, it's a tube. And you, when you do this, you put the axe in, the water comes out, it makes funny noises, and you could fall into the water. Things like that, it's incredible. The noise, when you crack the ice, it makes the noise, and you get really scared. And, uh, I remember being really tired, pushing my chest against, and then all the water, it goes down here, it fills up and or you're really heavy and you're like this and freezing all kinds of things i remember uh cascade d'argentier i finish uh, shiva's lingam by the time i fix my equipment to bring my second the rope to my second is frozen in the ice all the way because when the sun goes the temperature drops 15 degrees when you're in the sun, it's on the water, but then the sun disappears and it's frozen like that. So you can't do anything. You have to abseil down and cut the rope like this. This is another interesting thing about ice climbing. It doesn't normally go to plan. Just because you have the ability to do this cascade, maybe you don't do it. Because it's never the same. There are problems. You have to solve big problems sometimes. I had no fear because I know you can take it or you can leave it, yeah? And um, I realized very quickly that with ice, you have to have a good feeling. You can talk big. You can talk really big about what you're going to do. But when you walk and you see the frozen cascade, then you have to act. The talking is finished then. And so I realized very quickly that you had to have a, a strong passion for ice climbing. But it wasn't just parlare, parlare. You had to do it, yeah. Ice climbing is really super fantastic. But there was a, there was a moment, there was a click in time when it went from grade six to grade seven. And this was Partly the material and partly some very, very special people. For me, it was always a fantasy to climb harder, but it fits in with uh, sport climbing and the rising technique that sport climbing gave to some people. I will underline Thierry Renault from France. Because Jerry Renault could climb 8A, he was a brilliant alpinist, but he absolutely loved to climb ice. So in this one man, there was everything you needed to climb grade seven. Jerry Renault did Lalier. And Lalier was, it was the click in, in ice climbing really. Because for many people, they looked and they saw Lalier, but nobody thought it was possible. Yeah. And Thierry Renault went and did it. And I know how good he was. And I also know how mad he was, because you had to be mad to climb Lalier. Lalier was very dangerous. And this is something people don't understand about grade seven. Grade seven has to, it's that next step up in danger too. It's fragility. The structure must be fragile because then you have to adopt a much lighter technique. You cannot be bash, bash, bash. You have to be, you know, light and delicate with the structure. I wanted to do a grade seven, obviously, but there aren't many. You have to wait for the conditions and special things. I did one in uh, Switzerland, which was really good. But I wanted to do a big, famous one. And then I thought, I do one, then I stop, yeah? 
I had the opportunity to see one on the Argentier Glacier and it was called Nuit Blanche or I called it Nuit Blanche and uh, it was very very beautiful I was super happy but then a man called Christophe Lefeil he did it the next week he put a bolt in it and he said he was the first one to do it Thierry Renault tried to help me because it was in the big magazines and so then I had my first big fight with um, the magazines with Vertical and things like this and I was so so angry Grade 7 even to this day is very rare to find and I don't think you see it very often. People, they wait for better conditions, the ice is thicker and then they do it. I am not stupid, so if I was to keep climbing grade 7, I would die, for sure. But I wanted to stay climbing and um, I wanted to still push myself but not always at grade 7. So with my experience of climbing rock and mixed, the mixed thing from the UK, the people from the UK we understood mixed climbing like the Europeans didn't really understand mixed climbing. The people of the UK were the first really good mixed climbers because in one night with the rain it would freeze and the climb would be different. Maybe this much ice and you had to find a place in the cracks and so there was this long tradition of mixed climbing which you didn't have uh, in the rest of the world. I was able to come here to Konya and see things that nobody else had ever seen. And this was the start of mixed climbing in Europe of this interesting level where you have uh, X-Files and things like that. Nobody understood the X-Files was even there. They just walked straight past it. But I could see these nice little icicles. X-Files was possible. X-Files became a very nice route. And it's not so dangerous. The angle of X-Files is continuously vertical or a little bit overhanging. So you had to use all the fitness that you had from hard rock climbing. And you still didn't know it was possible. So there was this mental challenge that made it really exciting. But it was still, you know you weren't gonna die. Yeah. After x Files, I was very happy and um, I, th I thought my job was done, it was finished. But magazines, they knew they need new photos, they need new stories, and then there was another line there, um, The Empire Strikes Back. It's great that uh, maybe eight plus nine, the first little pitch. Then you, you go and you take an overhanging wall, and it's like nine plus ten. I don't know what it's like now, because things change. But then the third pitch, from the ledge, there was an icicle there, hang within space, and you could just reach it if you stretched into the void and put your axes in it and climbed it. It was 20 meters, 20 meters without um, equipment, without ice cream. So the risk was really hard, high, and the ice was thin. It was really, really thin. It was like lace, you know, it was like climbing a, a long cellar, a curtain of uh, lace. It was very hard. So you had nine, maybe ten, and then a grade seven pitch. I didn't invent dry touring, no. I made it a little bit harder, and I made it a little bit more interesting. But I didn't realize that 20 years in the future, they would be climbing these overhangs without ice, just with rock. I didn't realize this. I knew it was possible, but I always thought you need some ice to make it look beautiful, to make it look like a real game. We kept on improving the ice axes and the crampons. 
we just kept making ice climbing easier and easier and easier. You have ice screws, you can just put in like this, you know, fingers up the nose, you put an ice screw in there. It's like crazy. Literally, 30 seconds, clip, and you are happy. Okay, maybe one is not enough. Okay, I put five in here. Bang, 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 bang. It's like this, man. Look, I can put an ice screw in. The good old days were tough, man. They were really tough. I'll tell you a story about putting an ice screw in the good old days, like, you know, 1974 or something. You buy them, they were shit, they cost a lot of money. You hang on one hand, you have to make a hole to start it, you push it in, you try to push it in, maybe the thing falls down and you, it's gone. <laughs> then you get the other one, you smash the fuck out of it and it goes in about this much, but it won't turn. For sure it won't turn. So you put the, the, the axe inside it and no, you push it no, around. No, 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 no. But all the time you're hanging off this arm, maybe like this bent. So you're fucked after 20 seconds. You're exhausted like this. And then you go back and an ice screw would take 20 minutes to put in. The avant bras were like Popeye. You only ever really put one ice screw in Per, per longer for the pitch. You put it in where it was most difficult and the rest of the time you didn't put protection in. <laughs> so you were brave, yeah? You were very, very brave. And now I just put an ice screw in, 25, 30 seconds. I put another one in. So now you don't need balls, you just need money <laughs> or be a sponsored climber. The new equipment, the new ice axe, the new <laughs> ice screw that you do like this, ice climbing was finished. It then became just acrobatics.